All right, Blues, it's Stephen here on Blue Me Rising TV, and we're going to dissect the um, horrible, terrible game that was the 4-2 loss at Southampton. Now, this was, this was typical City. Only City could go into a week where we got a Champions League semi-final off the back of a great result at Real Madrid to um, then just not turn up and get pulled apart by a team down in eight position. Now, we've kind of grown used to this, I guess, but it, it still felt frustrating and it was very much typical of everything we've seen so far in the season, in the league from Pellegrini. Immediately, it was pretty obvious that we'd set up the wrong way. I mean, obviously, we had to make changes and yes, there was an argument for that, but once again, we set up against a team that press uh, high up the pitch and with plenty of pace, um, and we just left no midfield, and we had players being overrun, our defence looked disorganised, uh, Kolarov Ugh, the less said about him, the better. Um, Zabaleta, sadly, his legs seems to have been gone um, a long time ago now, and once again, there was further, further evidence that maybe he might not survive the summer call, which is horrible to consider, but it's a very probable possibility, unfortunately. But yeah, it was just, we felt like we hadn't learned from previous mistakes. If you look at um, away games in the Champions League, like Sevilla, where we were a team organised with shape and we set up to um, work well against a team with high energy and high pressing and pace, it felt like none of the lessons had been learned from that. Once again, in the Premier League, we were undone by a team who played that way. You think of the Liverpool games, think of the Spurs games. This felt very similar, once again, even Leicester. Um, they were just faster, they were sharp, and it felt like we had no reaction until it was far too late. Um, Pellegrini sat there looking a little bit lost, if we're being totally honest. And despite everything, this shows why maybe next season the club are trying to move forward once again to another level because that kind of performance just simply isn't acceptable for a club like Manchester City. Um, in midfield, it felt confusing. Delph, now we all got a lot of good feeling towards Delph and I'm sure he'll be a very good player for Manchester City but he looked rusty. It must be tough for someone like him, only ever coming in as a replacement. He's clearly not uh, part of our first choice 11 at the moment. He's basically the player that comes in when someone else needs a rest. Now that, that, can, that can only be tiring for someone like him and as a result he struggled to um, form an understanding with Fernandinho quite, clear, quite clearly from the off. There was no natural intuition. They were exposed um, um, pretty much throughout the whole game. Sterling sadly looked naff. He looked really, really bad. I mean, it's difficult for anyone coming back from, in, from injury sorry, uh, when they haven't played many games. And he was a good example of what, um, how, how players need several games to get um, a, run, a run of form going. And he looks like the season's um, coming to an end for him as well. I mean, obviously, he'll probably be involved in the Champions League. But he isn't sharp at the moment. He's a good example of a player that hopefully we'll get more out of next season. Now, over on the right as well, um, Nasri, let's be honest, it isn't his preferred position. He was playing as a right winger when he's really either a, a number 10 or out wide on the left way, somewhere he can cut in or use the fullbacks to overlap. But Nasri looks a bit quiet as well. Sadly, got rid of his glorious bleach blonde hair as well, which is a shame. But, you know, c'est la vie and all that. But, yeah, the midfield didn't look balanced. It wasn't the one that, that, that we'd usually play. And the most frustrating thing is that we never really reacted to that. Now, onto the saviour of the game, the one major plus point, and that's Kalechi Iheanacho. The man is a genius. He's a, a wonderful prospect. And with every game, we're seeing further and further proof of his burgeoning ability and his talent and potential, which just raises the question, why hasn't he been used more this season? He's, he's now the most clinical striker in the Premier League on um, um, goals per minute ratio, uh, which is phenomenal. He's on 13 goals this season. He's played about seven minutes per game all season. Now, if you just think what he could have done and the goals he could have scored if um, he'd had the same amount of minutes that Wilfred Bonney had, it, it doesn't even bear thinking. He's an exceptional talent. And encouragingly, there were signs for the first time that this was a player who was growing into his, into his role in the squad He's always looked good, but he's always had that kind of air of a kid trying to prove himself. And he's looked a little bit naive at times, despite his obvious talent. But this time he led from the front. He was our main man. He had that slightly Aguero kind of feel of, I'm going to try and pull you out of this terrible situation. Do you remember um, a couple of years back when Aguero scored two away at QPR and kept putting us back into it? It was very much like that. I mean, it wasn't a happy ending this time like that game. But Kalecci tried his best. He scored a great goal, which he made the first goal himself with great work outside the box. And the second goal, well, that was just special. And that's what he's capable of. And it does make you think, maybe if he'd been involved a little bit more, would we have a few more points on the, on the board? He would have had a few more goals, definitely. Definitely a few more than Bonnie. So 
logical logical presumption is that yes maybe we would have but yeah it's frustrating to see that hopefully next season we'll see a big change on that front but he, he did also raise the question about the amount of players who are just going through the motions back to Kolarov the most frustrating sight of the whole game was uh, for the second goal when Kolarov was just jogging back completely lost his runner and yeah didn't even make an attempt to track back his marker and it was just frustrating to see he was in his head in his head he was on holiday somewhere on a beach chilling doing absolutely nothing and that is just totally unacceptable the most frustrating thing about it is that he will still be back in the squad uh, come the Real Madrid game he'll be on the bench and he'll still be the first choice of placement if Guy Oclici picks up a knock and fingers crossed he doesn't but that says it all about the current squad um, that certain players are guaranteed positions or guaranteed games regardless of their performance and that just isn't acceptable under Manchester City and it shouldn't be acceptable going forward in the future. Can you imagine Kolarov getting away with that under Pep Guardiola? Of course he wouldn't, but thankfully anyway, this is all going to change as we know. Um, thankfully too, we'll see a completely different team um, in the Real Madrid uh, quarter, uh, sorry, semi-final. Quarter-final? Well past that. And in the semi-final, we'll see several changes, a totally different team and it'll be hopefully a very a reliable, very sturdy performance and one that can get us through to the final. But anyway, Blues, what is it you made? What did you make of the performance? Is Kalecci the only saving grace from that game? Was there anyone else impressed? Is Sterling going to get his form back next season? Will Kolarov go? What did you make of Demichelis in midfield? What was that about? I was confused as the rest of you with that. That was strange. Though we did do a nice Zidane roulette turn. Strange, but stranger things have happened in Volusia and it'll carry on being that way too. But anyway, get in the comments below. Let us know what you think of the game. Let us know what you think of the Real Madrid game coming up. Can we do it? Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Drop a like on the video and we'll see you soon.